Yo, what is up guys? Aspect Gaming here. Back again. Episode 12 of Divine Journey 2. So in between episodes, I have acquired a lot of Cloudberries and Stalacripes. Basically what I did is I just left this on overnight, and I woke up, and we got a whole bunch of stuff now. It was a lot more than this too. I had to throw out a lot of seeds, so I need to really expand this storage system quickly. But this is working incredibly well. Even just these 9x9s. This 9x9 of things is working out extremely well. And pretty soon we have to start... I need to start getting drawers with void upgrades. Because otherwise this is going to never stop. So that's how you prevent lag with this. So the system doesn't overflow. You void the excess. But hopefully I can find a use for them. Or store them in large enough that it would take like an eon to fully, fully fill up. And I have prepared two more spells that I want to craft. That being the Augment spell and the Fey Light spell. So the Augment spell takes Wild Roots, which is really not that bad. And the recipe is this. Pretty easy once you have all the all the stuff planted. I'd recommend if you're doing Roots yourself, go through, just get every single thing. Make an auto farm like I did, and then start crafting. It made it a lot easier. Then the other one I want to make is the Fey Light so this needs a sunflower. I'm in a plains biome, so they're right near me. So I just want to grab one. And then the eye seeds. These are from the nether. These are from those weird hanging eyeballs. When you go in the nether, make sure you collect literally everything you see. You see. Otherwise, you're going to be kicking yourself. So we need the pestle. So you throw all five things in. Grind it up. Get the dust. Let's do the other one while we're at it. Cool. And then you just pop this in here with that, I don't remember what that the green thing is called, but it will eventually learn the spell. Cool, so the spell Augment has been added to the library. So you hit your spell storage button, which in my case is K. I'm just going to put it on here. Now, I don't know how to actually switch the spell slots. Okay, if you hold shift and then right click, that's what it is. I like that a lot. When I learned the other one. So we'll add Fade Light here as well. So Augment, um, I believe it doesn't do anything until you assign it something to do. And also I'm going to need Wild Root. I think I'm going to make a different component pouch as well. This one doesn't have enough slots for... It doesn't have as many slots as I would like for the spell casting. I just like to have a large amount of excess. Like realistically, this is enough. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna run out while out on the out on and doing things. So, so we want to edit the spells now. Let's go to the imposer. Let's look at augments. Augments. <laughs> so reach increases the distance you can reach with tools. That's kind of crazy. How long does that last? Slow fall, not useful. Speed increases your movement speed. That's tempting. The cost is 5.5 wild wheat. It's not that bad. It's a light drifter. Enter an incorporeal state, drifting and seeing through objects. This is the one that is really cool. So I think we're going to go for that one. Magnetism, not that good. Bitter luck grants you luck. I don't care. This one gives you strength. That one's all right. Haste. Haste could be useful for mining, I guess, but... Again, the mining is so easy with Vein Miner, it's not really that useful. Second Wind lets you breathe underwater. That would have been useful before I explored the ocean, bio, ocean Monument. And this one gives you an Absorption Shield. So I think it's pretty obvious what we're going to do. We're going to get some Spirit Herbs, and we're going to put on that one. And God, I'm in love with the flight from that wand. It feels so good. Like I like it more than a lot of jetpacks that I, I've used in mod packs. It just feels so much better. Like, just, I, I think it's interesting the way that it is. I'll fly around for a bit once I upgrade this. Okay, so that's augmented. Let's look at the modifiers for the Fade Light. Okay, so these look, seem like most of them are changing the color of the light. These also, these also add additional costs as well. Which isn't that bad for aesthetics. So this lets you consume the lights. Let's just see what it looks like by default. 
bring that back. So augment. Oh, I need the spirit herbs in my pouch. Okay, we're getting pressed for space in this thing. I wish it was bigger. I don't expect to be using this as, as often. Okay, so yeah, you pop into spectator mode and you can go through the fucking walls. How cool is that? Takes a hot second to charge back up though. But yeah, this is amazing. Like, oh, here's the dungeon I found. And I can look in the chest and stuff. It's it's just so cool. Like I'm gonna be using that all the time. And Fey Light pops a little orb down. And I guess you can break them. It looks like I broke it there by tapping it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, these look a lot better than torches already. They're a little bit bright and they kinda look like aura nodes, but hey, it's okay. I'll think about it. The colored lights might be less harsh than the bright white orb. It doesn't render until you're quite close to it, too. I don't know. We have these other spells. Ooh, an iron toolkit. I don't really know what that does. Netherite or blood gem. I don't know which is better, so we're going to wait till we know which one we want. Okay, what do I use this for? Grants an extra modifier. Oh, I, cool. So I can just make these? All right. Okay, so that's how they're doing that now. I guess like the whole block of gold and a diamond thing is no more. So we'll go throw this next, next to the Tinker stuff, but I'm not sure what I want an extra modifier on currently. Maybe either my sword or my pickaxe at some point. But for now, we're going to leave that there. Okay, let's decide what else we want to do today. I was just mostly excited about the spells. So now, I believe, yeah, this Acid Cloud one sounds cool, but it should be difficult to get, I think. Yeah, the Ender Shield. This thing takes End of Steel, which... Needs End Stone, number one. I can't get that currently. And I'm pretty sure it needs the alloy smelter. It doesn't look like you can make it in the smelter. So yeah, it also needs dark steel. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten in roots. The This flight made everything so worth it. And I thought it was a really fun experience. So I guess it's time to get started with some immersive engineering. Let's take a look at what we can do over here. So, water wheel. Ooh, I had the video up a, a couple days ago about the most efficient water wheel to make. I kind of remember it, but I don't at the same time. But we can craft it all up right now, and I can check the video real quick. So I want to make a water wheel. You technically, you actually want to make three of them. Because if, if it's three wide, that's the maximum efficiency, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So we're going to do that. Which means we need 12 of these. That's not enough. There we go. And then I need more sticks. No, I'm stupid. This is what I want. There we go. Water wheels. I'll use the sticks anyways. I'll probably make more than one water wheel. Okay, so then that gives us, oh, another water wheel. I wanted to make two of them. Nice. <laughs> so we have an extra water wheel already for the next one we want to make. And then I'm pretty sure we're going to make a, yeah, a kinetic dynamo. Steel plates, copper coil blocks. Okay, this is a little bit annoying. Let's make one of these wire cutters. Steel, treated wood, string, steel rod. Easy enough. So to make this, we need to use a lot of copper, basically. So this is going to take four for one of these. So that's 32. So we need a stack of copper, which isn't a problem because we have a lot of it. 
Where is my hammer? In here. I hope this hammer doesn't break before it's done. Okay, good. So I turn this into wire. And how do I turn this then? Just a stick in the center. Can I use the tree to sticks? Actually, not to waste. And it's not like creosote is limited. What? Oh, I'm stupid. There we go. And you just need iron. I actually need more iron. I have a whole bunch of it smelting right now, but I'll probably need even more of it. I need a bunch of steel plates. It's 12 steel and then two redstone. Kinetic dynamo. All right, another problem is that there's not enough space in this yet because I haven't had time to dig it out. What I want this to be is like this first room isn't even like a machinery area. Like this is like an intermediate area. And then we have a huge open area that extends out way out there. Like this area is just going to be for like the one off things that I need around the base, like that, like the enchantment table, the smelter. Maybe even like ore input. Like I'd have like a chest where I could just run over here, throw ores in, and they automatically get processed. Like something like that. Like I don't want this to become a very crowded area. So I want to dig way. A way big area. And I want to make it look really cool too. I kind of have a vision for it. There was like a modded... Okay, actually, there's a hardcore Let's Play I watched like maybe like five or six years ago that had a really cool idea for a base with like... Actually, it was only the idea for the Nether Portal. Man, I, wouldn't, I don't even think I'd be able to find it if I tried, but there was like a huge circular area with like massive staircases on either side. Which is ambitious to make and annoying, but I might want to do something like that. Like dig down a little bit more to make sure that I'm not... Actually, it wouldn't even that be that bad if I poked out of the mountain or something and came up to the surface and had an above-ground portion of the base. So maybe I don't even go down farther. I just keep this as like a two-level base where like there's a higher plane with I don't even I don't even know what kind of stuff could be specifically on the higher plane, but the way I'm envisioning it right now is that there's sort of like a loop around and like intermediate hallways like this where there could be like smaller things or I don't even know. But I like this idea over here with this like little bridge that I have. And there's like a bridge and there's like smaller stuff on top of it. Because there's a lot of like little random things that I need throughout the mod pack. So I don't know. I think I'm going to look into the ideal water wheel setup and dig out a lot of this base right now. So I'll be back when I do all that. All right, I am back many hours later. I have set up the new area. And I'm just looking for anything I need for building materials real quick. I need more water buckets as well. Yeah, I was, I, this is, I'm recording this like much later, like probably like almost like eight hours after I last left. So I kind of remember what I was doing. What I was, what I spent my time doing was building this big thing. And I also made a symmetrical room over here. I'm not sure what's going to go over here yet, but we'll figure it out eventually. So I want to set up the water wheel. I know what the most efficient one is now, so we're going to set this up. So the only things I don't know is... How big is this guy? Oh, that's how big. I didn't, I didn't really want it to go on this side. I wanted it to go on the other side. Yeah, like this. Actually, I need to move it over a little bit more because the wall's there. I need the texture of this a lot cooler than I remember. Oh. Need one more. And the gearbox goes... I think it's directional. Yeah, it is. I'm going to sneak in here and do it like this. Alright, so it should be attached. I'm going to break up the floor so that water can flow under it. And then I got to tab out and look at these, look at this diagram because I found two, I found two different water wheel setups. One of which uses, it's kind of hilarious. It uses a uh, liquefied glowstone or whatever. And it flows upwards, so it hits the hits the back of the water wheel and improves the efficiency. 
but we don't have that so we have to go with the boring one which only makes 88 rf i think it is per tick okay so we need blocks right here and then on the top of it well, let me count how many honestly just start dumping water on it and see what happens I want glass too. I want I want to be able to see this thing. So it looks pretty cool, but I don't want the water to go all over the place. I don't have that much glass. I have a lot of sand though, so let's smelt some. I'm getting more used to the sky sword. It's kind of feeling really good now. I'm very much enjoying it. Oh, I also made a little bit of a... I made a little builder's wand. Where'd it go? I made an iron wand. So it's pretty easy to make. It was just a piece of steel, a stone wand, and any stick. And it lets you basically just tile more blocks than one at a time. So you do something like this. I guess it doesn't work with this. <laughs> But well, you can place multiple blocks at a time, and it's pretty nice. Okay. Yeah, we get we get glass shards back in this. We have quark. The first one goes on top. They want it to flow like down and over, I think. Something like this. I need I need the glass. I need more of the glass. With the sky sword, I can build my base a lot more vertically as well. I'm probably going to be doing that. The plants are like fully automated now too. So they're not a problem at all. Okay, so yeah, that's the first one. And then the second one goes kind of below it in a weird way. Yeah, when he's basalt, the pillar, it's easier to break. <clears throat> so the water source, we want it to flow essentially on the corner block below it. I think it's easier if I get if I go over here. I'll have a better view of it. Yeah, like this. This is how I want the water to hit it. So that speeds it up a little bit. And then we want another one to go below it. So block down, that the block the water is placed on top of. One down, and then directly below that, water flowing out. This way. We need, more, we need more water. I should have made an infinite source over here. I'm gonna move the I'm gonna move the coke and blast ovens over here too.
Okay, and then the last one is like this. Oh, there's actually one more. Another thing similar to this, but on the bottom here. The only question is how do I get in, up and in here? Okay, now we gotta make it not look ugly. That was a necessary piece of glass. This glass texture is kind of weird. I don't know if I like it. But this should be making 88 if I set it up right. Yeah, I think I need to replace this with basalt. Whatever, I'll pray it up later. But that is set up now. So the first thing I want is at least one of these presses. So craft the required materials for the metal press. Then check the engineer's manual for the metal press to figure out how to construct it. And then you right click on the central piston to form the multi-block. So let's grab this book. Let me form these back. Heavy machinery. Metal press. So yeah, okay, it's going kind of fast, but <laughs> I've I've seen these before. And they're not that crazy to build. So if you want to look, if you want to check them out, you can do it here. So they basically let us make plates, rods, and wires, I'm pretty sure. So I want I think I'll make three of these right now. Because they don't seem that hard to make. Just make sure we're not over underestimating it or overestimating my materials. I have those. Conveyor belts, we can make a bunch of those. Heavy machinery, electrum plate, that's not bad. Alright, so it's kind of just a bunch of steel. And then I need a little bit of Electrum. I might have a tiny bit in here. Yeah, I do. Okay, this can go back in here. I don't need this right now. I need three of these. make like 16 plates right now. I'll probably need more, but if I wanted to, I, if I really wanted to be efficient, I could make one of these and make a plate mold and then do all these, but I'd rather save my time rather than, rather than that. Okay, I gotta find my pistons. I know I got a bunch from the village early on. There's three. You can make more, they're not expensive. Iron plate, two stone. Lab redstone iron rod. Yeah, I have a bunch of iron in here.
use this. Then I want redstone. I need wood, wooden slabs of some kind. All right, that's completed. I'll just make a little chest to put this in that I'm done when I'm, as I'm crafting it. So conveyor belts, we have treated leather. Conveyor belt. Easy. I'm gonna need extra pistons as well for the actual multi-block. Um, what am I missing for the pistons? There we go. That's a whole bunch of them. The redstone engineering block, copper plate, iron. Okay, I have a whole bunch of these circuit plates left over. I made a new timer, so I got a whole bunch of these. And these need four each, so we need 12. my herb pouch go? What? Did I put it up top by accident? Here it is. Three of the rest of the engineering blocks, and then I need to make three crafts of the scaffolding. Nice. Okay. Do I have my yeah, I have my engineer's hammer on me. These are pretty important. They can go like right up over here. Almost blocks two scaffolding on the bottom, the redstone thing, piston facing it. Okay, the conveyor belts. Something like that, I think. Make sure the book.
Okay. Yeah, one of the items is coming this way. In the back side here. I hope I hope the orientation of that matters. What goes on the top then? The heavy engineering block. I put those away to clean up my inventory. And I forgot about them. Wrong on this one. <laughs> what? What did I do wrong? There we go. I think I'm just clicking in a bad spot. Okay, we got three of these babies. The reward here. Wow, what a crazy choice. Cool. So next up, I want to make the molds for it. Make the plate one first. So that we can save on the future plates. This requires 10 steel ingots. Oh, I gotta get a different blueprint, blueprint, don't I? Yeah, I gotta get the molds blueprint, blueprint. It's just blue dye and paper. an ogre over there. Okay, so we got the molds blueprint. Okay, so I put this in there. And if I just throw steel on, I'm pretty sure it processes it. Is not power? We need power. Okay, I kind of remember how to do all this. Yeah, MV wire coil. Oh, MV is electrum. Okay, let's make a whole bunch of electrum then. Honestly, I can just make a stack. Use a stack of gold and silver to make it while I'm at it. The smeltery is still very useful, even though we're sort of, it might feel like we're beyond that. But we need terracotta. I know where I can get that. 
We have a Mesa biome pretty nearby. I think this is Terracotta. Yeah, now we get to see how the staff works when we're actually flying. I think it's really cool. It's definitely the most unique form of flight that I've seen in like a mod so far. I'm used to just like zipping around the creative mode flight or like dealing with like jetpack hover mode and stuff. I think this is really fun. The material cost isn't too bad either, especially if you have these auto farms set up like I do. Like, I just left it on for a little bit and I have way more than enough that I need. It sort of like nags at me the fact that I'm using resources all the time, but again, they're essentially free. Hopefully this is actually terracotta. It might not be. Red rock. That is unfortunate. We really haven't been to a proper Mesa biome with all this arid biomes. That's kind of unfortunate. Well, I guess that's it for me then. I have to find terracotta in large quantities because I'm going to be needing a good amount of it. And I don't really want to be having to smell clay. So that's it for today's episode. We got a good amount of stuff done. So... Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.